everybody, we're here with, at Denver Art Society. I'm here with Connor, and he is one of our newer artists that has come to Denver Art Society. And um, I am going to uh, ask a couple of questions about his amazing artwork. Uh, so, what brought you to Denver Art Society? Well, um, I've, I've been involved in the art uh, sort of, I, I don't know if you would call it a cult, but like the art world for a while. And I've got a couple friends that I've been involved with in the art um, sort of blanket or umbrella. And one of them got involved with you and one of you guys, uh, one of them involved me with you guys. Uh, her name's Anna and she joined very quickly before I did. And she was like, hey, I know you do art and this is, you know, the cool, a cool space to do art in and this is something you would like to be involved in so she brought me into it and that was in July of this year it's currently December so that's still awesome. here so that's awesome that's really awesome yeah. it's always great when we get to reach out and collaborate with our friends and people bring us in and yeah like hey man this is the best stuff you gotta come see this well, and yeah and like in all honesty just being part of this has, you know, I've been for a long time looking for sort of, I guess I could say a community of like-minded individuals that are creative that, you know, just, you know, have things at their disposal and they're like, hey, I could do something with this rather than throw it away and I can, like, let's, let's make something, like, let's make this out of this. And, like, it's it's very refreshing to be part of a group of people that are like-minded in that way where you know everyone wants to do stuff with the stuff they have right you know it's 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 very very much fulfilling i, I love everybody here that's a big family we're slightly dysfunctional but it's the best family you'll ever be a part of <laughs> are, that's the, <laughs> the best families are dysfunctional so that's okay <laughs> So, uh, looking at your artwork, I really like it. Um, you should tell us about how you made, came up with your style. Like, I know it's unique to you, and you should tell us your sure. wonderful name that you've made for your own work that nobody else sure. has either. Yeah, well, um, I've always been involved with art, or at least been interested since I was very young. Um, and, you know, growing up, like, in, like, middle school and high school, obviously, was in part of art clubs and stuff. Really, like, I didn't kind of develop my own style until, um, until basically, well, uh, when I was in high school, I had a couple part-time jobs. Um, the one of the first ones was I worked at Guyrie's, um, uh, Guyrie's Art slash Home Decor, I... Everyone who was watching this probably knows what Guy Rees is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so back in the day, they didn't have the automated paint uh, filling machines for the sample. It's the little sample containers they have. So back in the day, my job was that I would take a gallon of paint. They would give me five gallons of paint every day. And it was my part-time job. You have four hours to fill sample bottles full of these five gallons of paint different colors right and so i would fill these little paint samples up you know like basically doing this all day long right i say all day but it's a part-time job so it was like four hours i had so uh whenever i did that we would always fill up usually around 80 of those paint samples and there would be one with like a half full paint sample right and we you know couldn't sell that so uh, that was kind of where it all started because I would take those paint samples. I didn't want to like throw them away. I'm a very big proponent of not wasting things. And I, would, I used to just mess around with those and um, came up with the style of painting that I do, which is um, basically non-objective is how I like to, to promote myself is as a non-objective artist. I use liquid acrylic paint. It is wall paint. Liquid acrylic is all wall paint is an acrylic paint. Liquid acrylic. Um, so basically what I do, uh, what I came up with this process from extra paint that I had after this 
part-time job back like seven years ago when I was a junior in high school was I, you know, you pour this paint onto a canvas and you just like kind of drip it around, you know, using gravity. I don't actually use a brush. Um, and I got into it and got, you know, pretty involved in keeping up with this and looked it up and there isn't actually a term for it. So I made one up, which is what you were probably just talking it. about. <laughs> and uh, so I made up this term called drip marbling. So what I do is drip marbling. <laughs> I love it. Um, so basically uh, what, I, what I do is kind of a self-taught type of a method of painting. I use liquid paint and pour it onto a canvas and drip it around and I've been doing it for about about 12 years honestly um, seven years since I came up with this like name for it but about 12 years that I've been doing it like painting and it's always been non-objective like even when I was like a little little tyke or little little kid whatever you want to call it been doing the same kind of type of non-objective work and this is kind of how I've settled into my own um, style. So when I say non-objective, what I mean is that it is in the eyes of the beholder, but it's not totally just up to chance. What I utilize in my uh, method of painting is a couple different things. It's color theory and color theory Basically, there's a lot of things you could say about color theory, but what it whittles down to is different colors put together in different ways, make people feel different ways, different things. You know, more cold colors will make people feel more um, in tune with their sadder emotions, maybe, or warmer colors will make people remember warmer um memories you know but you know it, it's up to the person you know different colors make people feel different ways basically that's what color theory is and the other thing that goes into it i use two two things it's color theory and it's pareidolia what pareidolia is is basically the idea it, it it's basically um the most common interpretation of it is that a lot of people will see faces in patterns so like if you look at a, a tree and you see the leaves on a tree, um, some people will like just randomly see faces in the leaves on a tree. That's pareidolia. Pareidolia is basically that the idea of people associate things that look sort of like other things with, with the things that are in their brains. So, kind of like if you're laying on the ground in a summer day looking up at the clouds trying to decide exactly, what the cloud looks like. Exactly, exactly like that. Yeah, so like, exactly like that. So I've heard a lot of people say that they see faces in my, my work or they see animals or they see landscapes. And it's just like clouds, you know, like some people always see animals in clouds or mm -hmm. faces or, you know like ships or you know just things that they have in their fantasies right so the the whole objective of non-objective work is to make you feel something that is already inside of you um so that's a really cool concept yeah so that's basically what i do is non-objective work and the paintings that i do are all on the spot None of them are long-term paintings. All of them have to be done while the paint is still wet. So it, it can't be done in longer than an hour and a half period, right? Because, you know, I, I can pour as much paint as I want on top of a canvas, but it still has to be done while it's wet. So usually when I make paintings, I might make anywhere between one and like five at a time, depending on how many colors and how much paint I have. But um, they take like anywhere between three and five days to dry. I like that. Because of how much paint is on top of the canvas. 
I bet. And I mean, it even takes, like, if you paint your wall, it takes a couple of days for it to dry. So, yeah. Yeah. I could only imagine how long it would take mm -hmm. to cure up right. And you probably have to be very careful not to touch it. Like, well, well, right. And pets are a problem, too. I've had, actually, <laughs> I've had, uh, when I was um, growing up, I, I used to live with my dad. Obviously, we had a dog. <laughs> like, my dad was never allowed to let my dogs downstairs whenever I had paintings drawing on the ground. But he, obviously, it happened. I remember the first time it happened, the, the, our dog, like, ran across my painting. And I didn't see it until the next morning. I was like... Oh my god, there are paw prints on my face. I just like made this painting. How are there dog prints? Obviously, it's my dog. So, yeah, no, it's 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 fun, but yeah, there are definitely you you have to watch out for your pets. Yeah, right. I bet, but it, in the same term, I bet it gave it a different kind of. Well, look of to course, it, you know, no, like, I definitely didn't put that away as a trash piece because. Right. That that added a little something to it. That's one of the ones that I haven't put on display yet. It's still in my basement, but that's awesome. It'll be up here sometime. It, eventually, yes. Yeah. They all make their way up here eventually, but mm -hmm. it does take time to to get there, especially if you do a lot and you have yeah. a lot of paintings, like most of us. Oh, do. I've, I've <laughs> yeah. When I say I've been painting for all these years, yeah, I've got like probably at least fifty pieces just laying around, like. I have, I, have, I have quite a few pieces. Indeed. Um, so what do you plan on doing like for your future endeavors? Like you're just making bigger pieces? Do you have other ideas that you want to incorporate it? Well, yes. Obviously, this is all sort of whatever we want it to be. So um, I didn't actually go to art school um, because the because I, I don't feel like it's necessarily necessary. Mm. You know, I feel like I'm sort of a student of the experience. So uh, there are definitely things that I don't even know that I'm going to be doing yet. But uh, this is always something that I have sort of evolved as I feel like it, it, it needs to be evolved. I look forward to see what comes out next. As it yeah. continues to evolve. Yeah, you know, this is all just, you know, something that I enjoy doing. It's it's part of the process. It's part of the evolution. Absolutely. So, you know, that's I feel like it's that's how it is with all art. So. It is absolutely, and the more you do it, the better you get. The more you learn, the more tricks you learn, the more, you know, little things that you, you pick up on, and you know, it's practices. Yeah. Well, We're practice practicing practices is all all you need I mean you don't need a degree to make art actually no, you just have to have the passion in yeah. your soul you have to have the, the yeah I actually did uh, I did like a TED talk in college about this it's about awesome. about how all art is good art and mm -hmm. anything created by human hands can be considered art and it doesn't actually matter what it looks like or you know how it's received there's someone out there that will love it. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it's it's really just, you know, whatever makes you feel good is the best you can do. There are pieces that just call to you. There are. They speak Certainly. to you. Yeah. Most definitely. Absolutely. So, um, well, I'm really glad that you came and became a member of our society. I'm really glad that you decided to be a part of our wonderful, awesome group here. And yeah, well, I'll be here for probably forever, so. Right, me too. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be like the little lady, the walker downstairs. Well, <laughs> I'll probably be here with so a dog at one point. First Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stealing beers and, you know, in the corner. That's, that's, that'll be me too. <laughs> yeah. Still be slinging the beers on first Friday. Well, Connor, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this interview with us. And Absolutely. I look forward to sharing it with the rest of our community. And Of course. I really and like the deep concepts. Between, yeah, of course. Everything. Well, it's not even that deep. I mean, like, art is just whatever the, whatever the hell you make it. Like, anybody that has any, any type of 
question or wants to have anyone that wants to be involved with them, um, I'm, I'm here. I would love to be part of the community with everybody. You know, anyone that wants to be involved with, you know, collaborations or that, you know, is second guessing themselves in any way, you know, I'm there for it. You know, I can be there to, to help or to try to give advice in any way, you know, just, just ask. Awesome. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely.